Minimum average roll value, or MARV, is the mean minus two standard deviations of a representative batch of samples, provides the engineer with a 97.5% confidence level that the goods purchased perform at or above the nominated value on the data sheet. Typical values are usually defined as the average or mean of a representative batch of samples. They provide the engineer with a 50% confidence level that the goods purchased perform at or above the nominated value on the data sheet. The specification will nominate the minimum acceptable strength of the geotextile. MARV results ensure that 97.5% of test results will meet or exceed specification. When engineers specify typical values, they need to accept that 50% of test results will not meet specification. For the same specification, the typical value will be higher than the MARV. Engineers need to understand that it does not represent a stronger product, just less certainty that the required strength will be met. As you can see, these alternative methods of specifying geotextiles can have quite different outcomes. The specification is the means of communicating design requirements to the construction phase. The design engineer must be very careful that the specification accurately reflects the design requirements and clearly states the designer's minimum expectations. This specification will determine the geotextile purchased by the construction engineer and will ultimately be reflected in the performance of the completed project. Engineers need to be guided in their specification approach by the relevant statutory body. For example, New South Wales Road Transport Authority Specification R63, Queensland Main Road Specification MRTS27, Transit New Zealand Specification TNZF7. These specifications guide the engineer on how to select the geotextile. They provide a framework to calculate the strength grade required. For example, the R63 specification considers the CBR of the subgrade thickness of the road formation and aggregate size within the formation to identify the required strength grade of the geotextile. R63 then specifies the minimum performance required of the geotextile within that strength class. The specifications are limited to separation and drainage functions in highway applications. Quality Assurance There are two forms of quality assurance available to the engineer. Manufacturing quality assurance, undertaken in the factory, results are reflected in the geotextile data sheets. Reputable manufacturers will stand behind these results. Construction Quality Assurance undertaken on-site to ensure the geotextile delivered meets project specifications. Both forms of quality assurance are important to manage the risk of errors or misunderstanding in the project chain, from design to procurement through delivery of product to construction. Geotextile manufacturers should operate within a quality assurance program. They must ensure the product is consistent, performs to specification, and is traceable from manufacturing batch to delivery on site. Manufacturing QA data should form the basis for published data. Construction quality assurance is performed on the geotextile delivered to site 
to ensure it meets the project specification. The cost of construction QA is very small when compared to purchase price of the geotextile or the cost of failure. Construction QA is recommended for any large project or where consequences of failure are high, such as with hazardous landfills. Documented test results are a critical part of the communication between manufacturers and engineers. Both parties need to understand the basis for the result. For example, a manufacturer should state their method and frequency of testing. There are Australian and international standards for geotextile testing. These provide the framework for conversations between engineers and manufacturers. A number of laboratories are available to perform construction quality assurance. Geotextiles are the largest product category within geosynthetics. They play a key role in many civil construction projects such as roads, railways and landfills. They can reduce cost and time and enable more innovative construction practices. To achieve the benefits, design engineers must specify and select the geotextile accurately and in sufficient detail. To do this, design engineers must understand the different geotextiles available from the raw materials and processes used. After design, it is important to verify that the geotextiles delivered meet the project specification. This is determined through construction quality assurance. Thanks to the following companies which supplied images or contributed to the development of this unit. This lecture series was funded and created by International Fibre Centre, TTNA, the Monash Geomechanics Group at Monash University. Thank you.